Holla, Bunny Clyde is here. What, you have no V-Bucks? Yes, and Epic Games raised their prices at the beginning of the season, so that their purchase became less profitable, and their farm in PvE became more relevant? As you already understood, we will talk about ways how to get V-Bucks in PvE, and in general I plan to release a series of training guides about fighting with Storm. But before you start, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell. And if you want to support our channel, please enter the code. Thank you. Also, thanks for material to player Freedom Human. Let's go! Originally, I played PvE for bucks, which you can get from there. But I found out that the game is something more than just V-Bucks farm, but let's talk about it later. There's a lot of materials about getting V-Bucks on YouTube. Some part of manuals are released more than one year ago, and during this time, everything has changed. Some of them miss some points, and some are made as clicky as possible. And they tell you about the possibility of getting hundreds of bucks every day. But no, PvE is not a bank that you can rob every day by spending an hour. Basically, you can get up from 50 bucks a day, plus some unstable methods which we will talk about. In the end, I'll also calculate how much V-Bucks I receive during 10 months, and you'll decide is it okay just for farming V-Bucks or not. Spoiler, yes, it's okay. And to not talk about this simple topic so long, let's begin. There are four ways of making V-Bucks in-game. Weekly rewards, daily tasks, tests with shields, alerts. Let's analyze them one by one more detail. Weekly rewards. Every day when you enter the game, you get a reward for entering, and once a week on the seventh day. V-Bucks are the reward, and the number of bucks issued is not constant. It depends on how many days you visited the game. For example, once a week you can get 150 bucks, once a month 300, and once every four months 800. Well and 1000 bucks for the final year in the game, after which everything is over, except first month, for which you will get 350 bucks, 50 for 11 days and 30 by 28. I also noticed the fact that missing one or even a few days does not make the counter to be reset, but it still stops the day when you are entered, and you are not able to enter the game for a long time, but still receive rewards. So you can buy PvE just for weekly V-Bucks, because for a year, which lasts 336 days here, you can get 10,000 V-Bucks totally, which is around 30 V-Bucks per day just for entering the game. The next way are daily tasks. One task is given every day, but you get no more than three. If previous tasks are not completed, a new one will not appear, so you need to go through them at least once every three days. Also, once a day, one task can be replaced with another random one. To perform the task successfully, the mission must be completed. As a reward for their passage, they give out 50 bucks except of three tasks, which I will also mention. In total, I counted 35 tasks. All of them are quite easy and do not cause problems with passing. But there are also quite dreary tasks that are better to replace. They are performed during the passage of missions. Let's start with the easier ones. The first variation of these tasks is to play three missions for one of the character classes. Soldier, Constructor, Traveler, Ninja, or kill 300 zombies in one of these classes. The next six require the killing of 300 zombies from a certain type of weapon. Cold Steel, Assault, Sniper, Pistols, Submachine Guns, Shotguns. Another killing task, this time it's using traps. You need to erase 150 zombies into powder. The task does not cause any difficulties at high levels, but newcomers have problems with its implementation due to lack of experience and shoving traps in a clean field or on cleaning portals. This task takes place during the defense of the object on such missions as Towards the Tempest. It is also the Lars Van. Battle with the Storm, Cyclops, or similar purposes, which need to protect the object. Traps are placed on the side of the brain attack or corridors of death, entering into which they sign a death sentence. The next four tasks involve passing three missions in one of the following locations. Stonewood, Plankerton, Canny Valley, Lynch Peaks. If one of these locations is not available, then the task will not drop out. And these are the tasks for which the reward in the form of V-Bucks is different. So completing missions in Stonewood gives 50 bucks, in Plankerton 60, in the Canny Valley 75, in Lynch Peaks 100. So it makes sense to try your luck replacing the task with the hope that it will fall out of one of these three. Next tasks are slightly more complicated than the previous ones and involve searching and destroying objects. Most of them are most quickly performed in the biome of the suburbs and cities. However, in other biomes you can also find the desired object. They are highlighted with a yellow outline on approach and a small exclamation mark on the map. It's also counted if they were destroyed by other players. Here is a list of items which you have to find and destroy. 5 slot machines, 3 fire engines, 3 garden gnomes, 6 park swings, 8 teddy bears, 20 TVs, 10 gas cylinders, more common in the industrial zone biome, 4 server racks, found equally often in all biomes, most often they are in the shelter of the survivor. Well, the remaining 8 tasks that I would recommend to replace, since they are the longest and may require more than one mission. In 4 tasks, it is necessary to find certain zones. 
10 suburban zones, 8 urban zones, 3 construction sites, found mainly in the industrial zone biome, desert, thunder track, 3 rural ruins, found mainly in the field biome. The task of finding 4 field runaways of survivors is completed in 1 to 2 missions. On average, 2 shelters appear on the map, but all 4 may also appear. The task of building 4 radar towers can be completed in one game for special. Construction of a radar network for missions. There are few radar towers on other missions, on average 1 to 2 on the map. To pass the penultimate mission, you need to save 25 survivors on special missions. This task can be completed in at least two games. On ordinary missions, an average of four survivors appear on the map. Well, the last task is three joint sorties. The worst, because you go blindly on a completely random mission, on which someone is already there. I recommend replacing in 100% of cases. But if you still decide to go through it, then you need a question mark on the map located to the edge of the storm shield. Select it, start up, and go through three missions. That's all with daily tasks, for beginning, I prefer to fully check this video in detail and take it apart. If you find it helpful, share it with your friends to farm V-Bucks together. It's much more interesting. Write in the comments below which method is your most pleased to use if you are already farming V-Bucks. With you was Bunny Clyde. To all the world!